Hi friends, I'm Marie Mliwara. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the history of my basically shopping obsession when it comes to perfumes. I always had a lot of fragrances. I never had as many as I do have now. So there is definitely some point where I'm sure there was a sharp turn from just appreciating a few fragrances, let's say my collection would usually be more than 10 but less than 50, to a point where it just started exploding. Just the other day somebody asked me about for how long did I have my Salvador Dali bottles, because some of them uh, used to be dirt cheap back in the day, but it's kind of almost impossible to find them now. And I started looking and that whole thing just created an avalanche of excavations of my past and present orders. And you know what? I actually found it to be quite revealing and interesting, not only to see how my consumerism got ramped up and some of you know, um, for like a couple of years now, I've been participating in a movement that I call mindful hedonism. I still do, in, do love and enjoy beautiful and well-crafted things, but I, no longer want to be driven by them. I want to be the curator. I want to be the one who makes the buying decisions. It is not, and I don't want my life to be controlled by sales. If, if, it's like, if it boils down to it, that's it. So let's dive into the history memory lane. You, like some of the items that were actually the first surprised me and some of the prices, guys. Mmm. Those were the days. Those were the, you won't believe how much or how little how little I used to spend. Like it just shows that I knew I knew nothing about perfumery. I knew nothing about I don't know where to buy it and like what things were worth and which things were truly collectible and which which things were just passing by never to never to return to my olfactory library. All right, let's dive in. So I compiled, basically did a search of all of my fragrance net purchases. Uh, th this is not like a complete list, but it's kind of like a decent snapshot of my purchasing activity and what kind of things uh, they were really hot at the time. And I got actually the, the price range as well. So the first one that I found in the long, long, long history of my obsession and I found 56, I kid you not, 56 order, orders that I made from FragranceNet.com. That alone should tell you about the, <laughs> the magnitude of the problem. So the first one that I could dig out of my email was actually in April 2013. And in that order, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, in that order, I got Burberry Touch for men, pretty large bottle, 100 ml. I think that was a gift for someone because I don't remember ever wearing that myself. That was 37 bucks, decent for a large, you know, I think you can still buy it for more or less the same price. C and Sun and Kadakus, this is the one that I was trying to dig out. C and Sun and Kadakus, which is my favorite go-to refreshing, vigorous but cheapy kind of perfume for summer. Uh, I got 100 ml, that was a tester, for $19. Well, okay, like with plus minus tax, um, 20 bucks. I think it's a, it's not super cheap. It's not super cheap, but it's not super expensive for this perfume, so I think it's decent. I can see here, like in something, some like skincare item, I can see here that I only use 20% off on fragrancenet.com. Little did I know about that the normal, normal sale for fragrancenet.com was 37%, maybe even 40 back in the day. So yeah, I was not really good at anything when it came to like bargain hunting or really knowing the worth of fragrances. So paying 20, 20 bucks for something that actually stuck with my collection now for seven years, uh, I think I could have done much better back in the day. Maybe even now, who knows. All right, so that was April, right? April 2014. I was young. I was young, beautiful, and smart back in the day. God, seven years ago. Okay, 
Uh, the next order, <laughs> you will be surprised, but um, it was April and then it was September of the same year, 2013. Most of these were gifts. I can see it now. I got Marusa by Slava Zaitsev, uh, who was a infamous, really famous fashion designer in Soviet Union and like early post-Soviet post Union Russia. And he made this beautiful kind of spicy oriental perfume that costed I think I got it for $16 and I got two bottles because I regularly, when I visited Russia, it was sold exclusively abroad and you couldn't really buy it in Russia at the time. It was really weird. Um, so it was, I guess, like made for expert. And I would regularly, every time I would visit my family and relatives, I would bring like two, three, five of Marusa because it was very cheap. Uh, it was really nice. I wouldn't say that it's like in any way a iconic or one of a kind perfume anymore, but for the price of $16, you would get like 100 ml of it. It was, it was really decent. So a lot of friends of mine, my mom, her friends, they really loved it. So I would always bring like a bunch every time I came for holidays. He would silver wind wood. So it's a flanker by D squared. Nobody talks about D squared anymore, do they? It used to be a really popular kind of like up, upper middle market fashion brand, sort of like Topshop or Zara, maybe a little bit more upscale even. I guess like something like, hmm, what would be a good, com good comparison? Diesel maybe? Maybe Free People? Maybe a little bit more? Uh, but they made kind of like street fashion. Um, so their, their She Wood is still, I think, fairly popular among perfume maniacs, but uh, the He Wood and all of the flankers, they, they made so many of them and I think it very quickly lost its kind of momentum. I think I got that, so it's a men's perfume, I got it as a gift for someone. And I got Salvador Dali Laguna again. I used to have it a long time ago back in the day when I um, was still growing up uh, in Russia. And th this is the first time when I decided to reconnect with it again. I got myself 50 mil for $11. That's, that's my girl, that's it. Believe it or not, I only had a 20% coupon on that order on Frankensnet, so do the math. You could, you could have got it uh, even cheaper back then. All right, so that is September 2013. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Two years later, April 2015. Oh my God, the days, those were the days when we were not rigged by rampant consumerism, when we could buy one perfume a year. Do you remember those? Do you remember? when it could be two years between purchases of things. I can't, I, unbelievable. I'm impressed. I must say I'm impressed. Moreover, this order is clearly a bunch of gifts. Um, Dolce Gabbana in Intenso uh, for men, 35 bucks. It's a good price. I think you can still get it for that price. Burberry London by Burberry for men, 22 bucks good um, both were gifts and I think like a travel atomizer okay huh. wow wow like it just sounds like it's a different person who is she I want to be her um, November 2015 oh that's that's sweet this was when my obsession with L'Artisan perfumer truly started I blindly bought Le Dampere Extreme for $54, 50 mil. A bit pricey. Um, I used 25% discount on that order. Again, like I can't believe that I just didn't, didn't even try to Google search the 37% discount code because I think they had it for probably six years before they downgraded it to 35% discount that you can get now. 
I'm pretty sure, I actually I have a conspiracy theory in my mind that FragranceNet.com still has 37% code. It's just they are hiding it better and very few people know how to use it. I just, I just feel that they have other discount codes that we just haven't discovered yet that are much, much thicker. Uh, so 25% off, you know, could have done better there. Uh, $54 for a 50 ml of Lardis on Parfumeur. By nowadays, it's really decent, it's a good deal, like it will sell out now. All right, this is a November 2015, the next one. Oh my God, two years later. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Who is that girl? Who is that? I need to, I need to get to know her. She needs to tell me how to live my life better. Okay, July 2017. I mean, clearly I was probably buying from other sources in the middle of it, but it's still indicative because you will see how the frequency changes suddenly, just suddenly, and it becomes fucking crazy. Okay, July 2017, what did I thought was worthy of my money back then? Do you remember yourself in 2017? Just, you know, just take a break, just look back and think, where was I? What was I doing? How big was my collection back in 2017? So what I got was L'Artisan Parfumer Batucada. I remember that one. That was the first flop from L'Artisan for me. Batucada is supposed to be this kind of tropical cocktail. So somewhat um, tropical fruits, maybe like pineapple, I think, or something like that. Something in between mojito, pina colada, and a bunch of other kind of tropicale type of cocktails. It's supposed to be somewhat boozy and somewhat, you know, making you think of tropical vacation. But in a very elegant, artisan perfumer kind of way. I... Oh, okay, now we're talking. Now I get serious. I used 35% uh, coupon discount. And I got 50 ml of L'Artisan Parfumer, are you ready for this? For $32. New, in a box. Yep. It was like tragically comical. In the same order, I ordered Versace Crystal Noir, Eau de Parfum, also 50 ml, for $32. Can you believe it? Niche! L'Artisan Parfumer, $32. And in the same breath, I shelled $32 for like run-of-the-mill, I don't want, like, well, yes, it's a designer perfume, but it's like an older designer perfume. It's something that's, I would call mass market at this point. <laughs> Whoa. Don't take me wrong. Crystal Noir is a really good coconutty, warm, ambery type of like cocoon type of perfume. My mom used to love it. I clearly valued it pretty high to pay as much for it as for niche fragrance uh, but it's nothing really that special you know it's there's there's so many perfumes like it i think it's one of the better ones considering the price range considering the notes but <laughs> to buy l'artisan perfumer and to spend the same amount of money on her such a crystal noir is kind of comical to me now uh, and I also got Intimately Beckham Night, which was a flanker of a favorite of mine at the time, Intimately Beckham. Incredibly cuddly, flirty perfume, really good one that costed nothing. I got this one, it's a one ounce, 30 ml for $8.50. $8.50. Whoa. By the way, um, the David Beckham, well, Victoria Beckham to be more precise, her perfume line was discontinued a long time ago and not, not really around anymore. Okay, so we are in July 2017. Let's see what was next. Okay, not, see like it really starts shortening. The window between big purchases is shortening rather rapidly. It's October of the same year. Uh, what is it? Three months later? Two months later? No, three. Three months later. Uh, I got myself a vial of Narcissa Rodriguez Umber Mask. Can't remember it. 
I guess that was not really that impressive. I got myself a bottle, 30 ml of Narciso Rodriguez Narciso Pudre. Fully used it up. Narciso Pudre is really charming, kind of powdery, sweet, musky perfume. Very typical of what Narciso Rodriguez does. Not the most unique, not the best, not the most sophisticated uh, powdery like perfume centered around kind of like this like puff, powder puff effect. Uh, but it's decent. I paid $39 for it. It's a bit much. It's a bit much for one ounce, I'll be honest with you. I could have done much better. I got 30% discount on that order. Strange. Before I used up a 35% code. I don't know. I, di I didn't know what I was doing still, I guess. I also got myself 30 ml of my Burberry Black. So you see back in the day it was mostly designer perfumes and kind of like really well-known bestsellers. Uh, my Burberry Black, I got that for $30. I think that's good. That's fairly decent. Um, I loved it for probably a month. Used up around like 10 mil and then just spent three years trying to resell it completely fell out of love with it. It just, it has a little bit of this kind of dried fruit, kind of dried apricots kind of note. It's charming, it's a little bit tarty, a little bit sour, but still, like, you know, like ever since then, would I go back for that? No, I would probably try a new niche house. Uh, and oh, that makes my, that makes me tear up. And I also got myself a 50 ml of Anglomania by Vivian Yvestud for $34. All Vivian Yvestud fragrances by now are discontinued, very hard to find. Anglomania can easily go now for 60 plus, if not more. 100 I think is like the medium price for it, because it quickly became sort of a collectible type of fragrance. Little did I know that it was my signature for a decade. It was like me in a bottle. And I paid more for <laughs> Narcissa Rodriguez, like a sort of passing by nice perfume than I did for my like signature, signature fragrance. Now discontinued, now very expensive and hard to find. Ah, uh, if I knew then, if I knew then what I know now, I would have gotten 10. $34. Anglomania by Vivian Westwood, collectible now, and I paid less for it than for other, other items in that order. Gosh. Okay, let's move on. That was October 2017, a week later. You see? That's where the crazy starts. You, you see the two years between orders, then a week later, October 2017, I got something again. Okay, phew, that was a gift. Because I was kind of like, whoa, that's radical. That's a radical change of behavior. Burberry Brit or the Parfum, that was a gift for a friend of mine who loved the perfume. And she didn't know any better. She used to buy it full price from Sephora and that was like $100. I got her 100 mil for 30 bucks. Burberry Brit or the Parfum. Also like a Nina Ricci variety sampler. I don't think that was for me because I don't remember even having them or trying them. Maybe it was also for a friend, can't remember. All right, next. It's end of August, almost September 2018. I'm sorry, I just have to repeat that. Who's that, who's that girl? I wanna be her. Such responsible spending here. All right, again, bunch of designer perfumes. Mon Guerlain, $42 for 30 mil too expensive, like you can find it on Mercari now for like 20 bucks. Shalimar Souffle de Parfum, 30 mil, $31, it's okay. I think it's still pretty much cost the same. I didn't either save or overspend on it. I do like that one more. I have probably like seven milliliters left. I need to just kill it and move on. It's not something I would rebuy, but I love the packaging, the bottle. Mm. Mon Guerlain, I think I either re either regifted it or sell sold it for like 15 bucks. It was impossible to get rid of, not my cup of tea. It's like typical ethyl maltol, maltol kind of like liquid sugar, 
uh, run-of-the-mill designer fragrance but what's interesting about it is it has lavender in it so it's kind of like gourmand lavender contemporary type of gourmand like a very sugary cloying type of lavender uh, next we have here Lolita Limpica C Lolita Eau de Parfum I used up my Eau de Toilette version that was a really it was really flirty semi-sweet with bunch of red pepper that almost like was prickling your nose and I decided to get Eau de Parfum hoping that it would be more longer lasting unfortunately uh, it was just had less character so I still have that bottle I do enjoy it but it's just kind of forgettable for me I hope I will be able to rehome it at some point and either I'll get Eau de Toilette and will kind of make peace with the fact that it doesn't last longer than like 20, 20 minutes or we'll just forget about it. But it's a lovely, lovely, one of my favorites from Lalita Olympica. So see Lalita, I paid $25 for it. I think that's fair and I dare say you can probably find it cheaper on eBay at this point. Aha! Uh -huh. My first and only Jo Malone uh, Nutmeg and Ginger 30 mil, guess how much I paid for it, $58, what a fucking waste, I gifted it to a friend blogger of mine and just forgot it like like a bad dream, like a, like a passing nightmare. Jo Malone nutmeg and ginger didn't last a long time, it was a bit harsh, it was a bit simplistic and that's basically the gripe that I have with Jo Malone house in general. They're fine in terms of like, they're not offensive in terms of smells, but they're generic, simple, they don't last at all, they don't have any trail, they don't have any movement any interesting opening they're just so simple like body sprays yet they cost hundreds of dollars it's fucking mind-blowing and I think this this was one of those kind of really blind buys that I regretted fifty seven seven dollars fifty seven dollars for something that I I don't think sprayed more than once and just couldn't even resell because no like no sane person who knows their perfumes will spend a hundred dollars on Jo Malone it's just not a thing well again if you love Jo Malone it's your money you do with it what you what you want but once you start exploring the space of niche and also like the affordable perfumes that you can buy in Target and they, the perfumes that I can buy in Target, if they smell the same, with the same complexity and longevity as Jo Malone's, kind of, you know, like, what is there? What is there to argue about anymore? Okay, so that was painful. That's painful to watch even now. It was end of August 2018. The very next day, I made another purchase. And okay, I see, I see now what was going on here. Fucking hell! <gasps> wow! It was like $260 on all kinds of designer perfumes. All right, let's just like run through it because there's so many here. See, like that was probably a major. So, what is it? It is September, well, end of August, August 31st of 2018. Yeah, that sounds about right. This is when I got fucking crazy with consumerism was just spending I was buying everything um, that was my splurge when I really decided to reacquaint myself with Salvador Dali so I got Sunrise and Kadaku's 100 mil $20 Salvador Dali perfume de toilette which is here very hard to find kind of least uh, vintage resinous amber 30 mil Oh, I paid $17 for it at the time. Now easily 60 bucks. Uh, Purple Light by Salvador Dali. 30 mil, 6.30, okay, 6, 6 bucks. Used it up, bought myself a canister, like 100 mil for I think 16. But 6 bucks for 30 mil, wow. You see, like perfumes used to be dirt cheap before uh, perfume bloggers became a thing and popu popularized all of those. Okay, Delisim by Delisim, Delisima, 
Delis Delisim by Salvador Dali, $15. 100 mil. Trusardi My Name, creamy, sweet, kind of lilac. $32 for 50 mil. Uh, I used probably 10 mil of it and then got rid of it eventually. It was just, it's good. It's just not quite what I like to wear. Boss Orange by Hugo Boss. It's kind of like an orange milkshake, if you wish. Uh, $26 for 60 mil. I regifted it. It was so generic. I just couldn't bring myself to use it at all. Uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier Madame Eau de Parfum. I bought the wrong one. I bought 60 ml of Eau de Parfum while I actually wanted to buy Eau de Toilette because that one has a grenadine, kind of like this grenadine as it's used in cocktails note. And I really wanted this boozy grenadine, uh, but it's, it's only in Eau de Toilette and I couldn't find it at the time. So I got Eau de Parfum and I didn't have anything like that at all. It was just kind of like round of the meal boring perfume. $30, $30 for 60 for 60 mil. Jaipur bracelet by Boucheron, $28 for 100 mil. Cheap and chic like clouds by Moschino, $17 for 30 mil. Uh, oh, but this is memorable. And two vials of 4 mil of Cartier Leur Vosges Oud and Oud seven dollars so like a vial you know it's it's exclusive by Cartier very expensive stuff very hard to find that was the most shocking oud I've ever smelled I don't know why I decided to sample oud fragrances from something that is oud and oud in exclusive life by Cartier like just think Maria like put two and two together it's probably gonna be not the friendliest not the easiest wood to wear and that was true, I just couldn't. It was so, it was like an old scotch. It was so harsh, deep, medicinal. It was, it was like a slap in the face. I think I regifted it. And, the love of my life, Cartier Leur de Vindu, seven, seventh hour by Cartier in their hours line nine dollars for four four mil after that i got five of the same ones from ebay because i couldn't find the full size bottle and that started a year of hunting down for the seventh hour by cartier and i finally found myself a bottle in moscow for around a hundred hundred dollars but that started like this is still like such a signature unique rare fragrance for me that not many people know about and I'm like I have like this personal pride that I discovered it blindly and got a lot of people hooked into it into it it's basically if you want to think about it it's like the most delicious dark very dark like 99% cacao dark chocolate in terms of the space that it takes me to Two, it's Hogwarts. It's Hogwarts in a bottle. It's amazing. Next, uh, Lalique Le Parfum, 100 mil for $23. That's all right. I, did I use it up already? Did I get a second one? I'm not so sure. Uh, and Pearls de Lalique for $24. Also a tester, 100 mil. I think the prices are still pretty much the same. It's been, what, two years ago. All right. Then, so we were talking about beginning of September 2018. Middle of October, same year. So I somehow survived for a month and a half. But I, though I, I'm fairly sure I bought something from Fragrance X or from eBay in the middle. That's when my obsession with Serge Lutens started. I got Chergy for roughly 60 bucks. I got Jo de Po for roughly 60 bucks, which is, at this point, is a fair, fair price. I think they're a little bit more expensive now than they used to be. Aromatics in White by Clinique, love it. It's a, it's a very lovely perfume. I, it's kind of like my olfactory comfort zone. 
$26 for 50 ml. Narciso Rodriguez, Narciso Eau de Toilette, a black cube. 28. That's good. I would say that's good. I think it's more expensive now. Clean Kashmir, love it. I love Clean Kashmir. It's one of the very few clean fragrances that are worth the money and that don't smell cheap. Uh, 28 bucks for 30 ml. <sighs> pricey, pricey, a bit pricey. I think you can find it cheaper now. All right, all right. October 14, October 23, a week later. You see, 2018, it's when I lost my marbles. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.